So John, I'm just gonna pose a few questions for you. If you'd be kind enough to give us some insights, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it. So John, how do organizations overcome cultural obstacles in the deployment of productive technologies? Okay, and I'm just gonna use a simple analogy, like uh, even your own home has, and your own family has a culture, but if you have a toothache, we all go to the dentist, right? So when I look at organizations, start looking for where their pain points are, right? And I think the number one pain point to start is, are we able to get our customer what they need on time without resorting to uh, overarching methods to, to make that happen? So look for pain and then try to start there. And then you start ad addressing the parts of the culture that are uh, you know, firefighting. And, and that's a great way. Excellent, yes. And there are a number of obstacles with organizations that, that need addressing, not least of which is culture, of course. So how should executives lead change within their own organizations while avoiding negative impact on production, customer satisfaction, and corporate culture? Kind of a sister question to the, uh, the first one. And I, I think the first thing that uh, we need to start with as managers, as leaders, uh, what's actually going on in our system on the factory floor or in the back office and productions, we don't really know everything that's going on out there, right? And and which is, has been turned as the hidden factory. Now, while that can be a problem, if not addressed, it's a huge advantage if you have hidden factories and need more capacity. So for instance, we all know the term go to the Gemba or go to the workspace. Well, what are you looking for? If you actually go to parts of your system that are under stress or not uh, meeting capacity your customer needs, they've often developed workarounds with what they have. And you as a manager or leader can provide them with better tools, maybe small capital investment uh, or some training that can actually you know, boost your capacity in that spot by 20, 30% with minimal investment, sometimes by the end of the day. Wow. And what are some of the impacts of those workarounds? So uh, the first is, why do we have workarounds? Um, because in the short term, they're good, right? Like if something needs to be corrected because a mistake happens, whether it be in a physical product or in an order form, we want everyone to rush around and fix it because we never want that to get out to the customer, right? So it's good in the short term. And when it becomes bad is when that becomes has, starts happening two to three times a week, and all of a sudden we start to institutionalize this, right? So this is actually a great opportunity for leaders because as you see these hidden factories, which are really uh, a signal that the system's struggling to keep up. So if, if you only need to do it in the short term and it's some balancing, that's okay. If it starts to become chronic, it's the system telling us this is where, where we need to improve. And it's that's such a powerful thing because now as a leader, you're not fixing everything you're actually very focused on the parts that you fix. And that almost immediately shows up in output, not to mention morale. Well then, so what are some of the most common ways to increase a factory's intelligence quotient, leading to more productive and safer operations? Okay, so, um, you know, it's interesting when you think about uh, uh, intelligence in terms of like making intelligent or good decisions, you think about, how quickly does it take you to come to the right answer, right? So now you're actually coming to quality and speed. So here's this quality is a Six Sigma type of activity and speed is a lean activity. So look at your organization and see how quickly it comes to a decision based on the information it receives, which is observability, and also the way the company interprets it, which is orientation. And you may have noticed, I actually put this in the OODA loop, which is John Boyd's uh, uh, loop for uh, fast decision-making when you're flying a military aircraft. And what I see when I look at organizations is um, we, don't, we don't always get the data we need, right? Which now, thanks to Industry 4.0, uh, cost and technology is no longer a barrier to that. So we should be doing much better observation. Second, and this is where culture comes in, is orientation. When we see that data as a company, do we go, ah, that doesn't matter for us, or, or that's a special case. Do we orient that information so that we then can make it to use a decision? So I think those first two steps of better observation and then better orient, orienting ourselves to that data and what it means for our company leads to better decisions, and then our IQ increases. 